Once upon a time, the skies belonged to two giants, Boeing and Airbus, with wingspans that stretched across every continent, their dominance undisputed. But deep in Russia, amid sanctions, political tensions, and fading industrial pride, engineers have begun to build something few believed possible, the Superjet 100. It was born not of luxury or unlimited budgets, but of resilience, defiance, and a desire to reclaim the skies. Every bolt and wing speaks of survival in a divided world. Why is Russia now daring to challenge the giants? And how did this underdog become a symbol of resistance in modern aviation? Let's find out. The Sukhoi Superjet 100 SSJ-100 was developed as part of Russia's strategic plan to modernize its civil aviation industry starting in 2000. Created by the Sukhoi Civil Aircraft Company, a division of UAC, the project aimed to produce a modern regional jet to compete internationally with Western models such as the Embraer E-Jet and Bombardier CRJ. In design, the SSJ-100 is a 75 to 100 seat regional airliner effectively serving short to medium haul routes. Development began with the goal of replacing older Soviet-era regional aircraft such as the Tupolev Tu-134, which had safety and operational limitations. The aircraft's seating capacity typically ranges from 87 to 98 passengers, depending on configuration, and has a maximum takeoff weight of 46 to 49 tons. The aircraft is powered by a Powerjet Sam 146 turbofan engine, a joint development between Russia and France that combines modern technology with lower operating and maintenance costs. In terms of flight testing, it completed its first test flight on 19 May 2008 in Komsomolsk on Amur, Russia. The first flight lasted about 65 minutes and was piloted by senior test pilot Alexander Yablontsev and test pilot Leonid Chikunov. During the flight, the aircraft climbed to an altitude of about 1 no, 200 meters, performed four runway crossings in a racetrack-style landing, and then landed successfully. Before the first flight, the prototype underwent extensive ground testing, including taxi and run tests, at increasing speeds of up to 162 kilometers per hour. The aircraft was equipped with a nose crane to measure static air pressure for testing purposes. The crane was then removed after calibration. Following its maiden flight, the jet underwent a testing certification process, culminating in the receipt of a type certificate from the Interstate Aviation Committee, or IACAR for short, in January 2011, allowing the aircraft to begin commercial operations. The aircraft's first commercial flight took place on 24 April 2011, operated by Armavia, between Yerevan and Moscow, marking the first all-new commercial aircraft from post-Soviet Russia, demonstrating Russia's capabilities in this field. The aircraft is designed to provide comfort and efficiency, and is equipped with modern avionics and design features that meet global standards. The project was later transferred to the Yakovlev, formerly Irkut brand of UAC, and the aircraft was renamed the SJ-100, with plans to Russify components to reduce dependence on Western suppliers. Throughout its existence, the Superjet has been both a symbol of technological aspirations and a practical attempt by Russia to regain its place in the global civil aviation market after decades of Soviet dominance and decline. The Superjet was developed with the support of a group of multinational suppliers and government contracts, reflecting a significant national industrial initiative to revive Russia's civil aircraft manufacturing industry in a competitive global environment. Are you curious how this plane beat the two giants? Remember to click the like and subscribe buttons to continue exploring. In the early 2000s, Boeing and Airbus were locked in a fierce battle for dominance in the skies, pouring billions into developing next-generation juggernauts like the 737 MAX and A320neo but they overlooked the smaller regional jet market, particularly those with a capacity of 100 passengers or less. Sukhoi saw an opportunity in this neglected segment. Instead of competing head-on with Boeing and Airbus, Sukhoi took a smarter approach. 
It targeted regional routes, short haul flights that required flexibility rather than large capacity. From this strategic decision came the SJ-100, a jet designed for airlines that valued affordability, reliability, and ease of operation over cutting edge luxury. What set the Sukhoi apart was not just its technical prowess, but its economics. The aircraft was priced much lower than its Western counterparts, immediately attracting the attention of smaller airlines and state-owned carriers. Furthermore, with the support of the Russian government, Sukhoi offered not only aircraft, but also a comprehensive ecosystem with favorable lease terms, local maintenance centers, and pilot training programs. For many domestic airlines operating in Russia's vast and challenging terrain, this was an attractive product, a modern jet, that they could actually afford to fly and maintain. By tapping into this niche market, Sukhoi completely broke free from the global duopoly. While it may lack some of the advanced materials and manufacturing scale of its Western rivals, the jet's market fit and lower acquisition costs give it a distinct advantage in its segment, allowing it to succeed by focusing on what matters most to regional airlines, cost effectiveness and flexibility. While Boeing and Airbus compete for megacities and major hubs, Sukhoi has taken over the regional skies, offering airlines a practical and cost-effective tool for shorter routes. The aircraft's success lies not in outdoing its rivals technically, but in outdoing them. To move away from dependence on Western engines, a domestic engine will contribute to Russia's plans in the aviation industry, the PD-8, which represents a major step forward in Russia's efforts to achieve independence in civil aviation and secure the future of the Sukhoi Superjet 100 program. Developed entirely from domestic components by Rostex UEC, the PD-8 is designed to replace the Franco-Russian SAM-146 turbofan engines that power the current Sukhoi fleet, which have been severely affected by Western sanctions and supply disruptions. With a thrust of 78 to 80 kilonewtons, the engine takes advantage of technological advances and experience from the larger PD-14 engine. Furthermore, the engine has a bypass ratio of 4.4 to 1, a pressure ratio of 28, and produces a maximum takeoff thrust of approximately 8 thordert out 56 kilograms force, approximately 79 kilonewtons, with a specific fuel consumption of approximately a rao.621 quan cladal equipafritih during the cruise phase. In addition, the engine incorporates modern manufacturing techniques, including 3D printing and advanced heat-resistant alloys for key components aiming for performance, comparable to Western engines such as the General Electric CF-34 or Rolls-Royce. In March 2025, the SJ-100 equipped with two PD-8 engines instead of the previous Franco-Russian SAM Satub-146 completed its first successful flight in Komsomolsk on Amur. This flight confirmed the PD-8's stable operation in various throttle modes and completed all planned tests without any abnormalities marking the official start of PD-8 flight testing and an important step towards certification. Serial production of the jet equipped with this domestically engined engine is scheduled to begin in 2026, with initial production volumes increasing to 30 engines per year. In addition to the technical specifications, the engine plays a central role in Russia's Russification strategy of aviation designed to replace imported components amid ongoing geopolitical restrictions. By equipping the SJ-100 regional jet with domestically produced engines, Russia aims to maintain and expand the aircraft's operations at home and in allied markets, despite Western sanctions. This strategic move strengthens technological sovereignty, reduces import dependence, and enhances supply chain control in the regional and specialized aircraft sectors, including non-Sukhoi applications, such as the B-200 amphibious aircraft, which is also being adapted to accommodate the PD-8 engine to enhance operational resilience and export potential. How big a game-changer is the PD-8 for this program? Comment your thoughts. The SJ-100 and the indigenous engine face a complex set of intertwined challenges across the engineering, manufacturing, and marketing fronts. Technically, 
the engine must match or exceed the performance reliability and efficiency of the earlier Franco-Russian SAM 146 and its Western equivalents, no small feat, given its advanced materials, high pressure ratios, and modern manufacturing techniques. Certification also poses another hurdle. Integrating a completely indigenous engine into an existing airframe requires extensive flight testing to validate not only the engine itself, but also the aircraft's systems control response and overall safety. Meanwhile, modifying existing SJ-100s involves structural modifications, engine mount upgrades, and control system modifications, adding costs that can amount to the price of a new aircraft. Manufacturing and supply chain issues further complicate the situation and context. Serial production of the PD-8 has only just begun with an initial output of around 30 engines per year, creating potential bottlenecks for fleet expansion or replacement programs. Furthermore, international sanctions and restrictions continue to restrict access to other critical imported components, forcing the replacement of around 40 systems with domestic alternatives raising questions about long-term spare parts, availability, maintenance, reliability, and life cycle costs. Market-wise, this aircraft is an older design introduced more than a decade ago, and even with the modern engine, it faces challenges in competing with newer regional jets that offer higher performance, lower operating costs, or globally recognized certifications. Strategically, Russia's Russification plans depend on the success of this indigenous engine, meaning any delays, technical shortcomings, or reliability issues could undermine the program's broader goals of aviation independence and control of domestic supply chains. Refurbishing the existing SJ-100 fleet is costly and operationally complex, which could put pressure on economic viability, while global market acceptance remains limited due to geopolitical constraints and the lack of established support networks outside of Russia and allied markets. In essence, while the combination of the engine and the jet improvement program marks a major step towards technological sovereignty and domestic aerospace capabilities, it must overcome a series of technical, industrial, and strategic hurdles balancing the promise of independence with the realities of certification production and market competition. However, UAC's partnership with India's Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, or HAL, for short to produce Sukhoi, is a landmark deal that will revive large-scale civil aircraft manufacturing in India. HAL will assemble and eventually manufacture Sukhoi aircraft domestically supporting India's growing regional connectivity needs, with over 200 aircraft expected over the next decade. The partnership also aligns with India's drive for self-reliance in the aerospace sector, strengthening local industry and creating jobs. For Russia, the partnership helps overcome sanctions-induced export restrictions by expanding the aircraft market through local production in India, a key regional hub. Overall, the deal is a strategic move that benefits both countries by boosting their aerospace capabilities and securing the operational future of the SJ-100. The video ends here. Thank you for staying until the end. Goodbye and see you again.